This video is a demonstration of breath pressure measurement. It corresponds to section 20.1 of the Applied Analog Electronics textbook. The pressure sensor that we'll be using is uh, one like this, a differential pressure sensor. That means there's two ports and what the pressure sensor does is measure the difference in pressure between the two ports. This particular one is an MPX 2053 DP. That DP at the end stands for differential pressure. I believe this particular model of pressure sensor has been discontinued by the manufacturer, but they have a very similar one that's still available. Okay, what we have, the two ports, one of them here is open to the air, and the other one is connected up via a hose to a mouthpiece. This mouthpiece is just a cheap piece of PVC elbow, sort of slip joint on one side, screw thread on the other. The screw thread is so we can get screw in a barbed fitting that we can push the hose onto. There's a two millimeter hole that we drilled in the back of the elbow and that's so that we can breathe through this mouthpiece and not just have uh, solid stopped flow. Um, the mouthpiece corresponds roughly to what's used in professional uh, respiratory measurement equipment, which has got a mouthpiece, here a filter, and then a hose here that connects up, much larger hose than what I was using, to the pressure sensor and the airflow measurement sensors. The filter in here is so that uh, people can breathe in and breathe out to the same equipment uh, without contaminating it, and without getting infected by whoever previously had you know, lung disease uh, breathing into the equipment. So this is a disposable mouthpiece. We use uh, these very cheap mouthpieces so that every student makes their own. Uh, when we have uh, lab time uh, in person, this drilling the two millimeter hole is done by the students with a drill press um, as part of learning how to use a drill press. That is not always available for at-home use because not everybody has drills or drill presses at home, so uh, for at-home labs we'll probably pre-drill the PVC elbows. Okay, so we've got the mouthpiece, the air hose. The air hose here is hooked up not to the positive port, but to the negative port. Why is that? Well, I wanted it so that higher pressure produced higher voltage. But the amplifier that I had this thing hooked up to was an inverting amplifier, or I hooked up the wires reversed from the way I should have. And so rather than swapping the wires to negate the signal, I swapped whether I was using the positive or negative port. There's several different ways to invert the signal here. I can change which port I'm connected to, I could swap the positive and the negative signal leads for the differential signal, and that negates the value. Or I could have used an amplifier that was non-inverting instead of inverting. Lots of different solutions here. Moving the hose from one port to the other was the simplest one in this case. It didn't require a screwdriver to undo the wires. Okay, what does that amplifier look like? I have soldered it here onto a printed circuit board just so I can use the same demo board from year to year and not have to rebuild it every time I do a demo. But uh, you can do the same design or very similar design on a breadboard. And that's what you'll be doing for your pressure sensor lab. There's an uh, instrumentation amplifier chip here that the differential signal that's coming from the uh, pressure sensor goes to and that produces the low gain signal and then I have an op amp which provides both the uh, VREF for the instrumentation amplifier uh, from one of the op amps and I also have uh, another op amp providing a second stage of gain that goes to a high gain output. So there are two outputs uh, out the screw terminal here. Uh, one is low gain, one is high gain and they go over to the teen CLC board which is running Teradac. Okay. Notice that there are four wires in this bundle here that goes over to the pressure sensor. 
Those four wires are power and ground, which are uh, providing the power to the pressure sensor, and a differential pair, the purple and white ones here, that are carrying the signal back from the pressure sensor. The signal is just the difference in voltage between these two wires. It, the uh, average value, the common mode signal, is not carrying any information. Okay, so what I want to do now is uh, use this mouthpiece and try and record the signal. So let's go over to uh, terminal window and run Teradac. Okay, it finds the Teensy board, so I can start it. Uh, seems to be ignoring da data pack before configuration set. Um, let's just see if we can record. Pause. Yes, it's still running. Okay. It just had some stuff stuck in the queue from the last time I ran it. All right, make this big enough so we can see it. Let's add the two channels. The first one was the low gain channel. The second one was the high gain channel. And of course, when you do this, you will have to know the gains of your two channels uh, because you will need, in order to determine what the pressure is, you'll have to convert the voltage you're measuring back into a pressure because nobody really wants to see plots of voltage versus time. They're going to want to see breath pressure versus time. But all the Teradac can record is voltage. So you have to know the gain of your amplifier to convert back to pressure. All right, so let's sample this at about 20 hertz. Um, that's fast enough that it'll catch just about anything that we're doing with our breath, but it's slow enough, or more importantly, it is a factor of 60 hertz, so that any 60 hertz noise or multiples of 60 hertz that we have um, are going to be alias to DC, and we're not going to see any 60 hertz noise in our recorded signal. And let's make this, if I can drag this down just a bit. make these a little bigger. I think one of the problems with Teradac is I've made those capture regions for pulling down a little too small and they're a little hard to hit with the arrow. Okay, so this is all set up to record. Start the recording. Grab the mouthpiece here and First of all, when I'm not doing anything, I'm not blowing into it, I'm not sucking air out of it, uh, this is our zero pressure line. And here it says it's a 1.624 volts for the high gain one. Notice it's not at exactly um, half the voltage. It's pretty close actually in this case, but you may have some offset here where it's not exactly at the VREF voltage that you think it ought to be. And so it's worth recording what is the zero pressure because when you're trying to figure out how much above or below uh, the zero pressure you are, you'll need to subtract off that voltage to get the right answer. Okay, so record a little bit of time without blowing into this. And then try blowing into it. And that's the positive pressure. And you can try doing inhaling also. I can always get somewhat higher pressure when I'm exhaling than when I'm inhaling. I don't know if that's standard, but I think it is. Okay, um, you can play around with other things with this pressure sensor besides just breath pressure. Um, well, one thing you could try doing is seeing how fast you can uh, make the thing move. Using tongue to uh, control it or doing it with um, with your glottis trying to go in and out with just your diaphragm and you can take a look at how fast you can control uh, the airflow with different ways of controlling the airflow another thing you can do is to take the hose and pinch it shut and then press on it. 
So let's see if I can get this up in the air. All I'm doing is pinching it shut with one hand and then squeezing it with the other. Uh, this method actually of having a hose with a one closed end and, and a pressure sensor at the other end is what's used for counting traffic on highways. You see those hoses across the street sometimes, sometimes in pairs. What they're there for is uh, as a tire runs over the hose, it squeezes it and you can get a little pressure tick recorded. And they can use that for counting cars and even for telling how fast the cars are going by having two hoses a fixed distance apart um, and measuring the time between a tire running over one and the tire running over the other. So lots of things you can do with the pressure sensor. So uh, build your amplifier, uh, know what the gain is of it so that you can convert stuff back into pressure and record breath pressure and other interesting things with it.